Hello everybody and welcome back to another video all about making data useful and in today's episode I guess you can call them uh, we've actually got a question from a stranger on the internet so today's question comes from um, learn programming um, on reddit uh, and it's basically saying hey I want to web scrape uh, goodreads I want to web scrape uh, the genre fantasy uh, and I actually want to look at the new releases tagged as fantasy now uh, this particular um, poster is talking about using C Sharp and .NET. Now, obviously, the answer is Python. What is the question? Uh, so we are going to use Python today because that is the best way to do it. Now, this person says here, let's have a quick read. Um, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, all the books on the page, which is fine. Also, I should say that I know they have an API, good to know, uh, which I've spent many, many hours trying to use, but I haven't made half the progress trying to use that one compared to this simple console app. So it sounds like they're using the front end HTML to web scrape. So let's start off by going to the website um, and I'm already on that fantasy sort of page. I'm scrolling down and I'll be honest with you, I did a little bit of scrolling around before the video and I wasn't actually able to get to the next page. I couldn't figure out where the next button was. I tried a few tricks in the in the uh, in the URL, you know, page equals two, p equals two. Oh, that's a minus. Um, uh, now it's telling me to log in. It just wasn't a really good experience. Now I've got a new trick up my sleeve. I want to share with everybody today. I want to share with you today. So let me go ahead and show you what that is. Uh, it's a little thing called man in a middle proxy. Uh, you might have come across this in your travels, but if you haven't. In a nutshell, it is a very easy and simple way for you to basically observe the traffic coming from your phone, so potentially an app. Uh, and I think we, we're going to use that today as a mechanism to get access to the Goodread, uh, the Goodreads API. Okay, uh, so what we need to do is we do need to install it. Now, I've already got it installed on my machine. Um, if you're on a different operating system, this will likely say something different. Um, but for me, I just had to copy and paste this into the terminal. Uh, now that it's been installed, what I can actually do is I can actually go ahead and start man in the middle proxy. Now, there is a few extra setup steps. I won't spend time in this video going through all of that. Uh, let's use the tool. Let's get the outcome that we're after. And hey, if you want to learn more about how to get it installed, how to set it up, how to sort of use it ongoing and all the ins and outs, drop me a comment below. Uh, I really appreciate when people take the time to leave me a comment. I try to reply back to all of them uh, and it really yeah, helps me make more videos. So let's go ahead and start by opening up my terminal. Okay, so I've got my terminal app open here. Uh, let's get a nice view on the desktop. Now, where's my terminal? Hello. Okay, I'm not going to edit this out. Some of the feedback has been, hey Adam, I love how you get lots of errors and you don't edit them out. <laughs> okay, I don't mean to get errors, but I just don't edit them out. Now, uh, I'm on Mac. This is my terminal. It's very similar on Linux. Now, for me, I do need to type in man in the middle proxy. Okay, what I might do is I might actually just move this window over here about there. Um, and then what I will do is I will have the phone up on the screen. So let's bring the phone up. Now the phone is a real sort of physical device. If you can see that on my camera, I'm going to load that up and I've got the Goodreads app installed. And so the intent here is for me to sort of navigate to the fantasy section. And what you're going to see on my screen is all the traffic flowing through the phone into the computer and off to the, the World Wide Web. So let's go ahead and open up Goodreads. Uh, as that's booting up, boom, straight into it. So what you'll notice here is um, obviously we've got on the phone the Goodreads. It's asking me to sign in and all that sort of stuff. But the first thing you'll notice is it's going through a whole heap of sort of stuff. It's hitting, you know, it looks like it's hitting Facebook several times, probably for the Facebook login. Um, it's got bug snag, not even sure what that is, some sort of ad system. Um, and before we jump into the actual getting all the sort of API for the books, let's just have a quick um, look around and see what we can see. So we've got this ad system API call here. It's a get API. So we can have a look at that. And we've got the request and we've got the response. So you notice here, the request has some headers. And if you watch my other videos, you'll know when we work with APIs, we typically have headers, same with HTML. Uh, and sometimes the request will have a request body uh, and then there's a response. And this response here is quite interesting. So if I scroll down a little bit, so here's the headers, scroll down. This is the response. Um, fetch failure, true, fetch lat latency, true, kind of stuff that I'm not familiar with. Now, if I go down to here, bug snag, status accepted as the response. But if you look at the request, this is pretty much what this app is sending back to its servers, uh, the Goodread, Goodreads people. Um, and it's actually giving away quite a bit of information, most likely to fingerprint my device so it knows who I am from an advertising point of view. Um, so we can see things here like it's an Apple, it's an iPhone 9.1, 
the operating system version, iOS, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, the build, I'm not sure what word size is, if you guys know, drop a comment, a couple of session IDs. Um, so it's pretty wild, all the different things that it's sending. Let's press Q to get out of that. Um, what we'll do is we'll get the phone up again, okay? Uh, we'll see if we can just go straight to Discover, alrighty? Uh, and straight away, as I'm in Discover, you can sort of see here on the screen that there's a whole bunch of API calls, a whole bunch of GET requests. Now, give me a moment. I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can go to Discover. I'm just going to scroll down and let's have a look. See more lists, okay? Uh, see more categories. Now, that's getting pretty crazy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Z on my screen. That's going to clear all the the existing traffic, uh, just to make it a little bit easier. Now, what I'm after is fantasy, so there it is, just above that one. Okay, perfect. I've clicked on fantasy, and it's going absolutely crazy. It's downloading all these, all these images. Um, the best epic fantasy fiction, best science fiction, best strong female fantasy novels. Uh, so this is pretty wild. All the different sort of stuff um, that's coming up. We do want the new release fantasies. Am I going to stuff this up? Let's find out. Quality dark fiction. Okay, these are lists. I'm in the wrong area. Let's try that again. <laughs> Let's see if we can get to something a bit more meaningful. I'm in discover. Aha, search. That's where I should have gone. Once again, let's go Z to clear that. Now that I'm in search, let's go fantasy. And there it goes. Off it goes. You can see it's sort of building out these lists. And what we'll do is we'll kind of leave it at that. And we'll pop the phone down for a moment. And we'll just have a look at what it's gone and done here. So you can see here it's got four different um, API calls. Three of them are posts. One is to some sort of metrics. Uh, one is to some sort of Goodreads translate. The other one is to GraphQL. The one I'm probably most interested in is this book list genres XML. Hit the uh, enter button on that. And what we have here is we have the API call. It's a get request. We have the request. Here's the headers. Okay. Here's the query. Now I'm noticing here format XML. Ideally, I'd like that to come back as JSON, but if it is XML data, we're just going to work with it anyway. Uh, then we have the response. Now the response is really where all the juicy details are. So we have the response headers. Sometimes there's good information in there, maybe a session, you know, ID code, that type of thing. But what we're most interested in here is this decoded XML. Okay. I'm just going to scroll down for a second. And what we can see here is it does look like it's come back with some fairly structured XML data. Now, if you're not familiar with XML data, it's very similar structure to sort of HTML. You have your sort of tags, your open and close tags, so your open key, close key, that type of thing. Uh, we have a list tag, title, description. Okay, scrolling down, page one of one. Per page, there's 30, good to see. Then we have some more metadata around total books, total ebooks, book, books title, fantasy, and then we have a book tag. Now, I have a suspicion that I'm going to observe probably 30 book tags, so open tag, close tag. And in there, we've got all this cool metadata. So we've got an ID, which is probably an internal ID um, to Goodreads. We have, if it's available, ISBN. Uh, we have some image URLs. We have a whole bunch of really rich information, some stuff around authors, authors, sorry. Um, just noticing here, authors is indented a little bit. So there's probably um, multiple authors for potentially one book. Um, so we may want to do some smarts around how to dig a bit deeper into that when we are extracting the data. Um, Going to keep scrolling down and then boom, straight away, we can see here there's the close book tag and then there's another book. So how do we get access to this in Python? So the good news is if you have watched my previous videos, um, what we traditionally do is we try to copy the request as curl and then convert that into a Python request. And we can do the exact same thing here in man in the middle proxy. So to go ahead and do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press uh, W. Uh, and you can see here W's got save.file and it's got at focus. Uh, what I'm actually going to replace that to is save.clip for clipboard. No, I'm not. I'm getting that wrong. I, I should have remembered this. I've only just learned this command like in the last couple of hours. Uh, where's my guy? Okay, export.clip curl at focus. See if I was ever going to remember that. Together everybody, export.clip curl focus. Okay, let's go back and I'm not going to edit that because I'm a real person. Oh, what was it again? <laughs> export.clip. It's pretty much there. Okay. Export clip. Export clip at focus flow. No, at focus was it like that? No. You know what? I actually copied it. I should just paste it. Okay. Export.clip curl at focus. To help you remember that, write it in the comments. No other comment necessary. Hit the enter button on that and guess what? We've just put that into our clipboard. What does that mean? 
a command V, it's going to be pasted somewhere. So where are we going to paste that? Let's go ahead and go to my favorite website, which is convert a curl command to a Python request. So I've been here before you can tell. So paste that in there. And now that's done for us is written a whole bunch of Python, which is kind of seems like we're cheating, but it's very, very good. I love it. So we're going to jump back into our, we're going to go here and we're going to go to a brand new notebook. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Python at all and you're thinking, what is this notebook thing you're talking about? Um, you can install notebooks from Anaconda. Okay. Anaconda. Uh, and it's really easy to install. Uh, go ahead and install your notebooks in Anaconda. But honestly, jump on YouTube, jump on Udemy, jump on anywhere and just watch a couple of intros to Python. Uh, you'll figure it out really quickly. Cool. So I'm going to paste that into my uh, notebook and what that's done for us is actually generated or it's basically copied the headers the parameters and then the response okay uh, one thing I don't love is this authorization I don't think I need it so I'm just going to comment that out so it's not being run uh, and a couple of observations is it does say XML I'd love for that to say JSON uh, and the other one is we've got 30 items per page maybe we can dial that up a little bit but we've got to be careful because it might have some smarts that says well hey we're only ever expecting you to ask for 30 if you ask for more we're going to maybe block you or you know don't allow you to do that and then finally we've got this page page one uh, and so ideally we want to sort of loop through and go page one get the data page two get the data page three get the data so on and so forth so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a shift enter okay uh, and we'll give ourselves a bit of space here now that i've done a shift enter what that's done for us it's gone ahead and run that uh, request request.get and it's gone to that api endpoint with the xml uh, i'm going to hit the uh, shift enter on that and we've got a status code of 200 which is exactly what, what we want to see uh, and we're going to have a look at the text okay uh, and the text is just plain text we know that because it has a single quote there uh, and we can prove that out by wrapping it in a type and it just comes back as a string which is a sort of standard python type um, which we can't really easily work with straight away. So we do need to convert that into a different type of object. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, I love beautiful soup. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Now, uh, the only difference between how I usually interact with beautiful soup is we typically interact with beautiful soup with HTML pages. Um, but in today's video, we are going to be interacting with beautiful soup in XML format. It's pretty much identical, um, but it just has a small tweak in how we create the soup object. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and say from BS4, okay, import, pressing tab, and we're gonna import beautiful soup. Uh, while we're here, we are gonna be using the analytics data science package called pandas. Uh, so let's go ahead and import pandas now. Uh, and we're gonna import that as PD, uh, just so it's a little bit easier to reference later. So shift enter on that. Uh, we've now imported those two extra modules let's go ahead and create our soup object so to start with we'll make this really clear just in case we leave this uh, piece of code for six months and come back to it and think what was i what was i thinking so we'll start by creating an object or a variable sorry called html now html is literally just going to be that response.txt we just looked at okay uh, and then i'm going to create a soup object and the soup object is going to be uh, made up of beautiful soup and i'm going to pass in our new little variable here called html I've called it HTML, it's actually XML. Let's get smart around this. It's called XML string, because that's what it really is. It's a string that looks like XML. Um, and with beautiful soup, we typically type in HTML.parser, okay? But today we're gonna type in just XML, okay? Uh, what that's done for us, it's converted this XML string into a beautiful soup object, which looks pretty much identical, but now you can do some really cool string methods and attributes. And one of those, for example, is title. And when I type in title, it comes back with title fantasy. I can also do some neat stuff like, say, for example, find all at title. Okay. And now it's come back with all of the titles. So all the book titles by the looks of it. Uh, and then we can even say, hey, for, you know, for title in that you know, list of titles, Let's go ahead and print the title, but this time around, rather than just print it, let's ask for just the text. And just the text is this part between the tags. Okay, so we can say dot text. Uh, and now we have a list of titles. I'm noticing here it says fantasy, and then we have some books. And the reason for that is we haven't actually gone ahead and found all of our book 
sort of listings, the, the 30 books that we're expecting to be in there. Um, so to be able to do that, what we will do is we'll actually swap that out from title to book, okay? I'll get rid of that one because that's an error. Now let's have a look. So now we have this book um, tag, which then contains all the data for the book. Now I'm going to just check the length on that. I'm expecting 30, and here we are, 30, perfect. Now what we're going to do is we do have this um, sort of list of books. So let's make it easy on ourselves. We'll call it books. Alrighty, nice and easy. And we'll give ourselves a bit more space to work with. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say, hey, for book in books, okay, let's go ahead and print just one, okay? And what we're also going to do is we're going to put a break on that and say stop after one. We just want to see what the data looks like. So we're going to print that book out. And as we expected, as we saw in the man in the middle proxy, we now have this really rich data set that tells us all about the ID, the ISBN, you know, the title, title without series. Um, so it's a really, really rich set of data. But obviously, we don't want to have to sit here and sort of collect up each individual tag, okay, or in this case, tag name. So what we could do is once we kind of loop through each of the books, once we're in that loop, we can loop through each of these tags and actually kind of potentially build out a simple dictionary that will store sort of key value pairs. So moving away from an XML format into a, a native sort of dictionary format that uh, Python uses, and then that potentially could be then made into a very simple pandas data frame that we can output to CSV. So. Let's go ahead and give that a go. So what we'll do is we'll leave, we'll get rid of that for now. And then what we'll say is we'll go for, okay, so for item in, now we've got this book sort of, um, I guess, object or this book sort of thing. Um, and what we want to say is we pretty much want to find all, <laughs> which sounds a bit confusing, um, but we're going to find all of these tags in here. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll print out the item and again I'll put a break on okay so let's go ahead and break that and then what we've got here is and you know what we haven't done we haven't put a break on the main loop okay so when I do print item we'll take that break off it's actually just printing out each of the items now what's really interesting about that is the item has a number of different attributes available to us one of which is dot name. So if we look at dot name, what this is actually printing out is all of the sort of, if you think about key value pairs, this is all the keys, right? This is all the keys um, that sit before the values. Uh, so we have the print item name, but we also have a print uh, item dot text, okay? And then what we're left with is this sort of um, key and value. So what we could potentially do, and this might get a bit confusing, but bear with me, okay? Uh, what we will do is we will in here we'll say hey there's a key okay and the key is equal to item dot name and then there's a value and the value is equal to item dot text alrighty uh, and you're probably wondering what is he on about and then what we want to do is a bit of a final step is we want to add that to a dictionary so what that might look like is we might say just above this for loop we might say the dart dictionary okay is equal to an empty dictionary and then what we probably want to do here is we probably want to say, hey, I want to add a key to that dictionary, okay? And I want that key to equal a value, which is these two here, which is the item name and the item text. So to go back a few steps, to really think about this, what we're saying is, hey, I've got this sort of beautiful soup object. I'm going to go ahead and find all the books, okay? There's 30 books, and I'm going to loop, loop through each of those. I'm going to call each of those iterations that loop a book. And then I'm going to say, hey, for all the items in the book okay so all the different IDs I'm going to loop through each of those and I'm going to add a I'm going to create a dictionary okay I'm going to add those values to it what I'm also going to do is I need to do something with that dictionary each time I sort of loop through so what I'm going to say is I'm going to create a little list here I'm going to call it master list which is a, a name I use quite often and I'm going to basically say each time uh, I've sort of looped through the book okay at the end of going through each of the items, and I've got this sort of dictionary, I'm going to go ahead and say master list dot append, and I'm going to go ahead and append the data dictionary. Give ourselves a bit more space. Uh, and again, if this isn't making a whole lot of sense, that's okay. Let's put a break in there and turn that off for now. Uh, let's shift enter on that, and let's have a look what's happened. So what we're asking for here is saying for book in books, uh, just do it once. We're going to have a break here. 
But inside that loop, in that book loop, we're going to loop through each of the items. So what I'm expecting to see from the data dictionary is all of that really rich data we saw before, but in a dictionary format. So here we go. We've got the ID and the ID number. We've got the number of text, um, review count. We've got a whole bunch of really rich data. So if I take the break off and put the master list back on and shift enter on that, what we now have is this master list. And the master list, as we should expect, will have a length of 30. Okay, uh, and that contains each of our dictionaries, which has all of those keys and all of those, all of those values. Uh, so the final step here is let's go ahead and make a data frame called maybe say good reads DF for data frame. Not a great name, but it'll do for now. Uh, and we're going to say PD if you recall at the very top of the script we wrote uh, import pandas as PD. PD dot data frame. Okay, uh, and that data frame is pretty much going to be our master list. Now pandas is great. It takes this list of dictionaries and all the keys become our columns and all the values become our rows. So let's go ahead and shift enter on that. And what we're left with is this Goodreads DF. Now that's a beautiful thing. We have the ID, the ISBN where it's available, the 13 digit ISBN. We've got all this really rich data. So the final step I may want to do is maybe do a two uh, CSV. Okay, uh, and what we'll do is we'll give that CSV a name, so maybe good, yeah, goodreads.csv, uh, and we don't want to include an index, which is these numbers down the side. They're not important for us just yet. Index equals false. Shift enter on that. So now if I go across to my file explorer, let me go ahead and open up that CSV files. We've got that goodreads.csv, uh, and what you'll see is we now have this really rich tabular data that we were able to get from XML data, which we were able to sort of observe from the app uh, on the phone. So the the end result here is we now have this beautifully structured data. We have their internal ID, this ISBN. Like I said, we've got this URL, titles, titles without series, country code. It's probably defaulted to AU because I'm in Australia. Uh, all this really rich image data, some links to all of that information. And it just kind of keeps on giving. This is, this is very good, well-structured data. Now, um, there's plenty of things we can do to continue this script. We can clean up the data a bit more. We can wrap it up in a function and we can uh, iterate over this page so for example if I go to page 2 okay shift enter on that shift enter on that scroll down shift enter and what we might do is we might do an underscore 2 just as a sample um, go back to my file explorer and what we'll see here is we now have a different set of data okay this is the second page the second set of 30 and you'll notice straight away that we've got completely different titles okay and you saw how quick that was it just dumped out all that really great information for us uh, and again we can go ahead and do some smarts around looping through um, uh, each of those and building a bit of a scraper that goes off and gets all of that data for us now thank you for watching this has been a bit of a quick intro. Uh, I really did just want to create this video to solve that problem, introduce you to man in the middle proxy. Like I said, we didn't go into too much detail uh, about how that all works, but if that's of interest to you, please drop me a comment. Uh, same with all the stuff we've gone through today. We've gone through beautiful soup, XML data, something we haven't done a lot of before. Um, loops within loops can be really confusing at times, especially if you're not familiar with them. Um, and so I just want to say, look, a huge thank you for tuning in today. Really appreciate it for you to stick around all the way to the end. Um, and as always, if you're not already subscribed, please uh, hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. See ya.